And see, that's what the devil wants to destroy. The devil wants to destroy households. We see the, the effects in our country with how many divorces and how many broken homes there are. And we see what that leads to. We see the, the softening on sin. We see the culture just shifting and going down the toilet. And a lot of that has to do because we don't have children being raised anymore in a solid home with mom and dad both being able to raise them together and be able to teach them morality and basic principles that they need to learn growing up because when you're growing up in a household with only one parent there's not very much time for that parent to spend with that child because they're going to be have to, have to be off working and the child's going to be left to his own and, and, you know, there's so many reasons. I'm not going to get super in-depth into all of that either because I want to focus more on the things that cause division in the home. Satan is trying to upend the structure of the family. You're in Mark 3. Just flip over to Mark chapter 10. I'm going to go over the same concept going all the way back to Genesis chapter 2 of God making man and woman. God creating the house from the beginning man's house the house of a, of, a, of a married couple as you're turning to mark 10 i'm going to read from genesis chapter 2 verse number 20 the bible reads and adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field but for adam there was not found in help meat for him and the lord god caused a deep sleep to fall upon adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof and the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She should be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So, right here right off the bat when god when god creates woman and we see in the story god creates all these animals right and adam names all the animals but even though you know he's going through each one none of them are appropriate to be in help meet a help suitable for adam as a man he could use these different animals for different things he could you know they could help him to do things they could help him to, to do some work and do some labor but they're really not suitable to be a partner for adam none of them fit the bill which is why god creates the woman to be that perfect help or partner to go along with adam and um it says here that for this cause for this reason when a man finds a wife that he leaves his father and mother and he's going to cleave unto his wife. And this is the beginning of new households, right? This isn't a, a continuation of everybody staying in one household. This is you're going to leave father and mother. Now we're starting a brand new house. And the fact that the man and the woman come together, the Bible is referring to them as being one flesh. It's like you're one person. When you get married to someone, you got to realize you are one. Okay, there's no more two. It's one. So dividing a husband against a wife having having that type of division is really really damaging to your household because you need to start thinking of yourselves as being one person and it's hard to do especially earlier on as opposed to later on in marriage and that's why so many marriages fail within the first few years because it's harder making that adjustment sometimes to to saying no it's, we're one person we're one flesh we are a team we are a team that, that doesn't split up, that can't be just broken apart. You're in Mark chapter 10. Look at verse number two. The Bible reads, And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Tempting him. And just so you know, that put away his wife is talking about divorce. Okay, when you're putting away your wife, in the Bible, it's talking about divorce. Verse number three, And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. And Jesus answered and said unto them, for the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. Look at this, verse number six. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. This is what we just read in Genesis chapter two. 
God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Those twain means two. So you have two, but now all of a sudden it's one flesh. So then they are no more twain, but one flesh. They're no more two. Now you're left with one. When you have that marriage, you, don't, you no longer have two, you have one. This is why, and, and you know, the, the younger generation especially needs to understand this if they ever hear, because these days you don't hear people referred to as Mr. and Mrs. Burzens, Mr. and Mrs. Cartagena. You, know, you, you don't hear that anymore, even though that used to be just, just the normal and the standard. And that's why you know, I refer to people, Mrs. Rogers, Mrs. Pax, Miss, you know, because it's one person, we're just identifying the one, you know, the, the one half of the whole of the one, because when you get married, you know, the woman takes the name of the man because that's why you become one, you know, one person. That's why you take the name. These all have biblical reasons. You, you might think, oh, well, it's just tradition, you know, oh, it's just, you know, it's, it's just uh, um, practical. No, there's, there's more to it than that. There's more meaning to it than that. And these days, people have, have gotten so, um, so little manners, I guess, in general. It, you know, there's just, you know, kids are just referring to people by their first names, referring to parents by first names. There's not, you know, it's, it's, it's not even, uh, uh, there's not very much respect anymore. And, and it's not appropriate either. And we start losing a lot of, you know, and you say, Pastor Burns, what, you know, you're nitpicking. Well, you know what? Every little thing adds up. All these little details, they mean something. And they're all being eroded just, just one after another. And yeah, any one individual thing, you might say that's not that big of a deal. But when you look at the whole, when you look at the collective, that's a big, it's a big transition. It's a big shift and it affects the way people think.